Today you will know that the Lord will come and he will save us. And in the morning you will see his glory. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. It's lovely to welcome you all to our Christmas Mass. It's so difficult nowadays for people to get to Mass, so I'm sure it's a joy for you to be here and to be here particularly uh, this Christmas tide. We're going to replace the penitential rite tonight with the blessing of the trees and of the crib. All glory and praise to you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for sending us your Son, Jesus, to be our brother. Bless us as we gather here and bless our Christmas trees. These trees that we have decorated in honor of your Son's birth among us Remind us with their lights that he is Lord and with its decorations recall our joy. Grant that we may receive him as our Savior and continue to give you glory by our lives. We ask this grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of all creation. We praise you for your love. We thank you because you have loved us so much that you sent your only Son to bring us eternal life. Bless this crib that we have prepared and let it be a reminder to us of the Lord Jesus, Son of God and Son of Mary. Father, we praise you through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated now we listen to the word of God. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. About Zion, I will not be silent. About Jerusalem, I will not grow weary until her integrity shines out like the dawn and her salvation flames like a torch. The nations then will see your integrity, all the kings your glory, and you will be called by a new name one which the mouth of the Lord will confirm. You are to be a crown of splendor in the hand of the Lord, a princely diadem in the hand of your God. No longer are you to be named forsaken, nor your land abandoned, but you shall be called 
my delight, and your land the wedded. For the Lord takes delight in you, and your land will have its wedding. Like a young man marrying a virgin, so will the one who built you wed you. As the bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I will sing. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your dynasty forever and set up your throne through all ages. I will sing of, of your love, O Lord. Happy the people who acclaim such a king, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who find their joy every day in your name, who make your justice the source of their bliss. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, the rock who saves me. I will keep my love for him always, for him my covenant shall endure. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia, he stood up in the synagogue, held up a hand for silence, and began to speak. Men of Israel and fearers of God, Listen, the God of our nation, Israel, chose our ancestors and made our people great when they were living as foreigners in Egypt. Then by divine power, he led them out. Then he made David their king, of whom he approved in these words. I have selected David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will carry out my whole purpose. To keep his promise, God has raised up for Israel one of David's descendants, Jesus as Savior, whose coming was heralded by John when he, pronounced, when he proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the whole people of Israel. Before John ended his career, he said, I am not the one you imagine me to be, that one is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Tomorrow there will be an end to the sin of the world, and the Savior of the world will be our King. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. This is how Jesus Christ came to be born. His mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they came to live together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a man of honor, and wanting to spare her publicity, decided to divorce her informally. He had made up his mind to do this when the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because she has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you must name him Jesus, because he is the one who is to save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill the words spoken by the Lord through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, a name which means 
God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord told him to do. He took his wife to his home, and though he had not had intercourse with her, she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Normally each day when we pray the rosary, we change the the mysteries. One day the joyful, another day the sorrowful, another day the mysteries of light, another day the glorious mysteries. But I find in the days before Christmas, I always want simply to pray the joyful mysteries of the rosary. I don't want to be sad And I don't want to have to deal with difficult things or awkward people. It was a happy and joyful time for Mary of Nazareth, and I want it to be a happy and joyful time for me. Does that sound all very selfish? Well, It must have been joyful for Mary to hear the announcement of the angel that she is to become a mother. And yet she was scarcely more than a child herself. Joyful. She was going to have to endure the gossip of the other villagers, no doubt aware of cruel words, and wounding glances. What was Joseph going to say? What were her parents going to say? And for the present, she could say nothing. The one thing she does say is, Fiat, let it be. And then she learns that her aging cousin Elizabeth, against all the odds, maybe some would think beyond nature, is entering her third trimester. Joyful news. But now she undertakes in her own pregnant state a fairly long and dangerous journey to Ain Karim, roughly about a hundred miles distant, much of the journey, an uphill trek. She would have to go through a mountainous region with many bandits waiting to surprise uh, unsuspecting travelers. No doubt Joseph was with her, but he would have had to return home his workshop and Mary would, do, Mary would do what many, so many women have done over the centuries she stayed and gave great selfless service to her old cousin trusting in God she said fiat let it be And then when her own time came, Mary must have felt joyful and happy. What could be better than to cooperate with God and bring new life into the world? But the politics and the state made things difficult and another arduous journey took them away from the comfort and the security of their own home. They were like refugees, strangers in a strange land. No one willing to offer them hospitality. The cleanliness and warmth of their own home is replaced by the dirt and squalor of a place fit for beasts. The great and the good The powers that be seem unawares of Emmanuel, 
God is with us. Only the shepherds whom people despised and demeaned and looked down upon came to visit. No emperors or civic leaders do homage to the king of kings. And Mary says, Fiat, let it be. And shortly afterwards, Joseph and Mary, with great joy and pride in their hearts, take the child to the temple to present him for purification according to the law of Moses. Like parents today, bringing their child to the church for baptism. I wonder how joyful they felt when, however, Simeon tells them that their son would become a sign that men would reject and refuse to acknowledge. How would you feel at the baptism of your child or grandchildren if someone said such awful things about your child? And then he looks, Simeon does, at Mary, eye to eye, face to face, and he tells her that a sword will pierce her soul. And then the elderly Anna probably causes confusion and concern when she announces to the people that this child would deliver Israel. And once again, Mary says, Fiat, let it be. The years pass happily and remarkably so, and the boy grows in wisdom and in favor with God and men. But on the cusp of his teenage years, he disappears. A whole day passes, then another, and another. It's easy to understand their anxiety. What had happened to him? Had been had he been captured, abused, kidnapped, maybe even, God forbid, murdered. To their relief and joy, they eventually find him in a temple, listening to and asking questions of those who taught there, the doctors of the temple. In their in her anxiety, Mary is left wondering at things beyond her understanding. Nevertheless, Mary said, Fiat, let it be. There would be many happy and uneventful years ahead, but she would continue to wonder and she would continue to say, Fiat, let it be. And now we'll profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The grace of God has appeared this night. In peace, then, let us pray that we will proclaim the glad tidings of Christ's birth to all who search for the meaning 
in their lives. Lord, hear us. That the light of Christ may be born in the hearts of all those whose lives are clouded with doubt, cynicism, and despair. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those who are homeless at this time of the year. May they find shelter and care. We pray also for those in prison and for all our loved ones who are in care in homes or in hospitals to bring them spiritual and mental well-being. Lord, hear us. That the eternal light of Christ may shine on all the deceased members of our families and friends. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, we give you thanks for the many blessings we receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. The 
in a similar way when supper was ended, he took their chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, <clears throat> his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim through whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mirren, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Aidan, St. Anthony, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Tell departed brothers and sisters to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. To save his command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see the salvation of our God. And tonight I'll just simply give you the host. I won't say anything just to kind of try and cut down on the movement of the earth. So just say quietly to yourself internally, Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, that we who are gladdened by participation in the Feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may, through an honorable way of life, become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear friends, uh, Monsignor Tormey and I wish you all a happy Christmas. Uh, for some of you, it may be your first time here at Mass for quite some time, and for some of you, it may be quite some time before you're able to come freely again. Uh, we pray God that those days will come. But just remember that whether you're able to come or not, nevertheless, Emmanuel, God, is with us. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go, the Mass is ended. <laughs>